Well, friends, uh, we now come to cone of friction, angle of friction, and angle of repose. Now, all these things is done to measure the coefficient of friction. As we have learned that the coefficient of friction is given by mu. Now, to, in order to measure mu, what we do is we apply a force, say for example, on a body like this. So, this is the force F. This is the friction force Fr. And this is a normal reaction N. So, what we do is we take a resultant of these two forces. So, the resultant R is the resultant. And this angle theta actually denotes the angle of friction. So, angle of friction, as you can see, is the angle between the normal reaction and the resultant of friction force and normal reaction. Now, if I want to measure the angle in terms of, say, tan theta, then I can easily find that tan theta is perpendicular by base. Now, the perpendicular, as you can see here, is equal to the friction force. So, it is friction force by the normal reaction. And as you all know, friction force is mu n. So, it is n. So, that gives us mu. So, this importance of this angle is the fact that the tan of the angle gives the coefficient of friction. As you can find or think with your closed eyes that otherwise it would have been very difficult to find mu unless we have a mathematical value of mu actually to calculate because mu acts between the contact surface of these two bodies. So, this is a technique, mathematical technique, how you can find mu. It is a quite uh, abstract uh, aspect as it is acting between two, these two bodies. So, that is the significance of angle of friction. Now, I will go to the point of studying cone of friction. This is the cone of friction is related with the angle of friction itself. So, if I again draw the body like this and if I apply the force like this, the friction goes in this way and the normal reaction and then the resultant of these two as we have seen there. Now, this makes an imaginary cone as you can imagine. This makes an imaginary cone. As I rotate this force in the whole plane, as I rotate this force in a two-dimensional plane, it forms a cone. Now, the importance of the cone lies in the fact that firstly, the semi-vertex angle of the cone is the angle of friction. And secondly, the point is that if I have to move the body, now by moving we mean sliding the body, then the external force should lie outside the cone. That is very important. If I apply a force inside the cone, then the body is not going to move. At least the body is not going to move, means the body is not going to slide. So, if I have the force outside the cone, then only the body is going to have a sliding motion. So, that is the importance of the cone and the angle of friction itself. Now, I come to angle of repose, where I am going to measure the angle of friction in an inclined plane, for example. Say, for this inclined plane theta or alpha, what I have is a body of mass and place there. Now, instantly I can find that this is the value of the weight component which acts vertically downward or along the incline. And then uh, this is the force which is mg cos alpha which actually balances the normal reaction. And this force is what balances the friction force. Now, as you can see that the friction force and mg sin alpha can balance each other. The normal reaction and M cos alpha can balance each other. So, once they get balanced like this, once they get balanced like this, I can put them as equation in this form that mg sin alpha, I can put it like this, that mg sin alpha will be balanced by friction force Fr and mg cos alpha will be balanced by the weight mg. So, if I divide them, you can have tan alpha, which is Fr by mg. And then Fr is mu n. I'm sorry, this is not mg. This is normal reaction n. This is also normal reaction n. So this is mu n, and then it goes off to say mu. So tan alpha again becomes mu. So now, what we can say is that for same value of mu, the angle of repose and angle of friction is same. So this is very important for us that for same value of mu, the angle of repose alpha and the angle of friction theta is same. Now, angle of repose implies that this is the incline. So,
So at this particular angle of repose, the body just sliding of its own. This is very important that you need not need to have an external force on the body. The body slides down of its own under the action of its weight component. That is the significance of angle of repose. So if I place the body at an angle greater than angle of repose, then the moment I put the body, the body will come down. But if I put the body at an angle less than angle of repose, then I have to apply an external force to move the body. That is what is the significance of angle of friction, cone of friction and angle of repose. That's all for now. For testing your understanding of this lesson and more videos, log on to www.tubelessons.net.